Hey there, this is Brandon, and this is going to be my chart review for Tuesday, October 13th. <clears throat> uh, I'm thinking this is going to be a pretty lengthy chart review. Um, I made several mistakes. I missed a lot of good trades, um, and uh, in general, had a pretty rough day. Uh, my my combine is all but toast at this point. Still have a little bit of equity left. I uh, haven't had the max drawdown, uh, but very, very close to it. So, um, so I need to review this chart very, very closely, and um, that's how I. That's how I'm going to learn. Um, <clears throat> I I have learned a lot so far, um, but I still have a lot. To, to learn from here and uh, so that's what this is all about this chart review um, so let's just get into it it turns out to be a, another one of these giant range days um, I had these three equidistant lines pretty early on um, I, I did have I had this line a little bit higher and I had this like I had this one tick higher and this two ticks higher um, and so I was kind of looking at this area and, and thinking it might reverse, um, but it ended up overshooting quite a ways uh, and then finally reversed. And I'm pretty sure I have this two-tiered range drawn in here correctly uh, because the overshoot here is just about the same as the overshoot we've had at least so far here on the other side um, there definitely was some bounce bounciness that was happening in here and this little quick little reversal type deal um, and then look at that high right there I mean this is in the after this is after the close uh, but still I, I think and then look at this touch right here um, so I think that trading range that two-tiered trading range was was the larger pattern I think that's valid um, I did take a, a good short right in here um, but that was my last good decent trade and, and then I got kinda chopped up in this area and I'll talk about that of course but um, <clears throat> let me zoom in here and a little bit more so in the overnight session, uh, you had your, your high here at uh, 2014. Actually, that was right right before the close yesterday. It popped up here and then closed uh, right in here at 12, 12.50, something like that. And then notice that the high right here was three ticks above that, and then that's when it started correcting. Um, and so I drew in this this channel in the overnight. Um, you do get a little bit of a break here, and it might be just a little bit steeper. Um, I liked it right in here because of those three touches, and it it gets a break, and then it moves to a new low, and then it reverses. So pretty pretty textbook um, price action right there. And you get kind of a channel going up. This wasn't quite clear <clears throat> to me. I didn't know exactly how to draw that in. And it's one of these um, channels where you you know you get a break and you you don't really get a retest. It kind of tried right in there, and I marked this for a short. Um, but I think it's. I mean, I, I don't know. Um, so. Yeah, so we had this channel kind of working up, and it, it might be more like this. Um, and I like that off of this body here, and then that touch there. Um, and I like it along the tops pretty well, too. You can see it's lining up there. And so, yeah, it's just you get a break, and it's just gone. Uh, I guess eventually you do get a retest here, but anyway, I um, this is the first trade that I marked for the day. I didn't start until uh, about quarter to six, right as this bar was forming, 
um, but you had a high here, nice bearish bar. So that's a first century short. Um, and then it pulls back here. And this is a somewhat bearish bar, and it drops below. There's a second entry short. I think it's a little sketchy. Um, but after this big move down, um, I think it's reasonable to expect prices to work at least back down to these lows. Um, it never can get further until way later in the day. Uh, but yeah, I like that as a second entry short. <clears throat> And like I said, I got started right as this bar was forming. Um, and it came down here. And I started the day, I mean, this was moving really slowly in here. Um, and it was really choppy. And I wish I had just waited until it was clear what was going on. I did not draw this trend line until, uh, I think, after this bounce, honestly. Um, no, I might have had it drawn before here, but I didn't take this trade because it was a first entry, even though it's right off the EMA and right off the trend line. Uh, but you can see how this trend line is working up; it's holding all those lows, and and uh, that was that was my key mistake right there: is not drawing that and not noticing the. Here's a high. Here's a higher high. Uh, it's an equal high there. Um, and also, this was a pretty clear channel working down, and this was the first break. And so I was expecting a retest of these lows here. And honestly, I was thinking maybe we'd retest these lows as well. So I had it in my mind um, to, to get short here. Um, so notice the high here, first entry, pullback, second entry. In hindsight, um, A, you know, this trend line is, I don't want to go short into that trend line. And B, um, this is not a great signal bar. It's a doji. It is staying below the EMA, um, but it, I don't know. It's just, I don't think this is a good setup at the end of the day. And of course, it wasn't. Um, what happened is prices ticked down and pretty quickly made this little low here. And so I put a limit order to get short back in here, and it came all the way back and filled me uh, right at 99 and a quarter. And notice if, if I had done it differently, if I'd been a little bit quicker and gotten short at 99 and a quarter right as this bar closed or right, as it, right after it ticked down or something like that, I would have gotten my four tick scalp. But as it was, it went down here, it came back, it filled my limit order, went two ticks my way. And I had a pretty tight stop on this. I just had my stop one tick above this uh, high here. Um, so I got stopped out for a five tick loss. And then, <laughs> then I got fooled again. I still didn't have this trend line here. Um, but I like this bearish bar. It's pretty small, but it does close on its very low. And on the next bar, it ticked one lower. Um, and so I put a limit order a couple of ticks into it and got short again right after I got stopped out in here um, and it turned out to be another trap um, and so really this is a triple bottom in here um, so this is almost kind of like your quote-unquote double test rule it tested the low here once twice and on the third time it failed that's actually um, I think that's a chance to get long really um, so I was starting to realize that hey this prices are not wanting to go lower here if anything they're you know they're starting to head up so pretty quickly after I got stopped out here this bar closed um, one tick above this high here and so I put my stop right there and I took another five tick um, loss and so um, what I like here is you get this low here this triple bottom once again and it goes tries to go lower once pulls back and tries to go lower twice
This is a failed second entry short counting from this low and that's it doesn't look like it because there's no color to it but that's a pretty bear a pretty bullish bar uh, closed on its very high and I think I was was trying to get long in this spot um, but it just it went away with, from me and I didn't want to chase it um, I was worried about these highs and so um, you know I just I just missed that trade um, and so, yeah, I started out with two um, five tick losses. And again, I think this is a nice place to go along once it ticks higher right here. Takes a minute or two, but then it takes off. And then I like the failed second entry short here. Uh, gives you a scalp. Comes back for the runners probably right in here, depending on how you manage it. Um, and now this is something that I did pretty much this entire move up you know you'll, you'll notice I did not take a single long trade for this entire move up I didn't go long even one time um, and that that is something that I clearly need to work on um, <clears throat> uh, I don't know what it is but I find myself feeling tempted to counter trend trade um, during moves like this. Um, so not only do I counter trend trade, but I also end up missing the good with the trend entries. Um, so what happened in here is I noticed these, these last highs over here and I kind of thought, okay, well maybe we'll turn out to be a range day. Um, so I was real tempted to get short right in here, uh, and it, you know, it, it it would have gone a couple of ticks my way, and then it would have stopped me out. So I was glad to at least avoid that temptation. Um, and uh, you know, so it kind of this kind of had a breakout here. Uh, you see the matching highs right in here. Maybe it's a tick higher, um, but you get a breakout. Um, and we don't want to trade that, but we can trade the breakout pullback, which is why I circled this trade here. Um, there's a couple of reasons to take this long. I <laughs> I think I, I actually, you know, like down here, I was trying to get long in here and um, probably, well, not probably, I was using a limit order and trying to get filled in here and then I moved it up to here and didn't get filled then I moved it there and didn't get filled um, and and you know by here it, it had taken off and so it was too late um, but yeah I I was leery of it because you can see it's a first entry counting from this recent high but on the other hand it's a breakout pullback notice breakout and it pulls back and this closes pretty bullishly it's only one tick below its high uh, it's also being supported by the EMA uh, and it's and it's right off of this trend line I mean to the tick um, so that turns out to be a good a great trade um, and I'm just sorry that I missed it and <laughs> and so then you know I went right back I, I I think what happens is psychologically I get frustrated after I miss trades like that and so then I'm trying to just get a trade uh, without really being patient enough to wait for a good setup uh, and that's what happened in here now I do have a little bit of a reason to to think about getting short here although this is not I mean it's not a trade that I marked and it's it's not really the way I should be trading. Uh, it did end up working out, um, partly because I was more conservative with my entry and I was more conservative with my target. I only took three ticks. Uh, I waited for prices to tick down and then I used a limit order to get short here. Um, but my thinking here was we had this clear channel working up and we had a little bit of an overshoot. And at one point, this bar was looking really bearish. Um, so I just, you know, it, it was a bad trade. It worked out for a three-tick scalp. Um, 
but uh, not, a, not a good idea in general to counter trend trade. Uh, so I really need to work on that. Um, but anyway, it came down here. I put a limit order. I got short. I didn't feel good about it. Um, so when prices came down in here, I just took what I could get. I took my three ticks instead of four. Uh, and it, would have, it, it wouldn't have stopped me out here technically. Um, I could have gotten the full four tick scalp, but I was, you know, I didn't feel good about that. And I, and I shouldn't. I shouldn't be counter trend trading. Um, and this channel is just working really well. So I, I was aware of that and I was kind of on high alert to try to get long. Um, I, I don't know if this is a really valid, safe place to get long. Um, what I what I think of it is you have a new high here, first entry short, pull back, second entry short. It can't go more than two ticks. Um, and and then it reverses and closes on its very high. Notice it, it there's a little uh, this bar closes on its high and this bar opens on its low and it never even comes back. So you would have had to use a stop at uh, at this price level to even get in that trade. And to me, that's kind of sketchy because you're going high or you're going long right at these highs, right at these very highs. Um, so I just didn't feel safe doing that. Um, and uh, so I missed that trade. And whether or not it's a valid, safe place to get long, we'll have to see. It is right off the EMA. So I'm, I'm guessing that Mac will mark that trade as a failed second entry short. Um, we'll have to see. And once again, I saw this bearish bar. Now, I had, I had these two lines here and here. And I had this line a tick higher. Uh, and then so I measured it from here to that level and I drew a third line up here. And so it was it was two ticks higher. Um, and so I was kind of anticipating um, a reversal at that price level. And you can see what happened here. It came up a tick shy and gave us this bearish bar. Um, so I took that as a sign to get short. Um, I waited for prices to tick one lower. And then I used a limit order to get short. It went three ticks against me and came back down and then went three ticks against me again and came back down here. And I, and I thought this, here I am again, I hear I'm counter trend trading once again. And I just said, I'm getting the hell out of this. Um, so once again, I, I could have gotten a full four ticks, although just barely. Um, but I, I just exited with a single tick. And, uh, and I told myself that I will not do that again. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely, definitely I have my, my work cut out for me. Um, so we got a new high here. And you get first entry short, pull back, second entry short. Uh, it fails. This is not the greatest bullish signal bar ever. But it's a failure. It's a trap. It's a failed second entry short people like me are trying to pick tops and they get they all get trapped um, and so I like that for a long it's also a second entry long counting from this high first entry long pullback second entry long right off of the EMA once again can't even get back to the trend line so this is a really strong trend and I'm I'm sorry that I missed all these long entries coming up here I mean look at that one two three five good longs coming up um, and I just watched them all go go by and worse even worse I was counter trend trading um, so that, and, I'll, and I'll talk about these arrows in a second when we get over to here so once again we had a little bit of an overshoot and I thought this was pretty tricky the way it went up here and then went down below this outside bar here um, and so once again I was I was in the mood to counter trend trade I thought okay this is the top of the range it's it's doing a little failed breakout which turns out to be true uh, I was just early on this one um, and so this is 
I counter trend traded myself on this trade because here, here's what I would have thought um, or he, here's what I was thinking. Okay, look at this big move up. And so I missed all these long trades. And so the temptation is, damn it, next time I get a chance to go long, I am taking it, right? And that's usually that usually results in disaster because usually finally by the time I get long, the trend is over and it actually reverses and I get yet another loss. Um, and so I, I, I faded this. What you have here is a high, pull back, first entry short, pull back, second entry short, and it fails. So by the book, that's a, a, a long entry. Um, and it would have in fact worked, but what I did is I, I faded it. I got short here instead of long, uh, and I took a four tick scalp um, and just, I mean, barely, right? I, it went one tick further and I was able to get my scalp and, and get the hell out. And then it, yet, it made yet another new high. And so that's what these things do, these strong trends. They go higher than you think is possible. Um, now, this area of the chart um, is something that I want to study very closely and get very, very familiar with this uh, reversal pattern. Um, <clears throat> first off, look at all this price action here. And every time that prices come back to the EMA, sometimes they can't even make it back to the EMA. But every time they get in the vicinity of the EMA, they rock it back up to the upside right here, uh, right here, goes back up, touches the EMA, goes back up, touches the EMA, goes back up, touches the EMA, goes back up. So you can see that. <clears throat> um, and then this is where everything changes. First of all, we get another overshoot, and this is a valid channel. Um, <clears throat> So we get an overshoot and we get some really bearish price action. And look at what happens when it hits the EMA here. It closes right at the EMA. And then you get a doji with a close right at the EMA. And another doji and another doji. Uh, and this I thought was telling. Look how it went up there and it came right back to the EMA. And then all of a sudden, hey, look, we got a nice bearish close below the EMA. So this... As this was happening, I, uh, I, you know, I was somewhat focused on that, and um, and I did have the mindset that we were that we were having a reversal, um, and I thought what we might get was where it partially reverses and, and spends a little bit of time below the EMA. Um, but then I thought we might get one more push to the upside to try to retest these highs. Um, and so that's that's what happened right in here. You notice we have a little channel, little tiny channel working down. You get a clear break and it makes a new low. This is a, this is a measured uh, move as well. And it, so, yeah, look at that. It comes up just a tick shy of that little measured move in there. <clears throat> and so when this bar had formed, and, I mean, it was a small bar. <clears throat> it was fairly bullish. And, again, I was thinking we might get one more little push here to the upside. So when this, when prices ticked one higher than this high, uh, I used a limit order to get long, <clears throat> excuse me, and I had a, a tight stop just one tick below below of this bar. So my I used that as my signal bar, and I used this as a second entry long. So look at the high, first entry long, pull back, second entry long. It turns out that I, what I wish I had done is go ahead and stay long, um, and then... Notice I got long at 10.75, so my eight tick stop would have been right here at 
Um, so I would have, it would have come, you know, seven ticks against me and then reverse went back up. And my rule there is if a trade ever goes seven ticks against me and then gives me a chance to, to take a profit for one tick, I take it. Um, so that would have been, that would have worked right there. Um, but instead, I had my tight stop one tick below this. Uh, so I got stopped out for a five tick loss. And then notice where that bar closed. So it came right down here and stopped me out and then closed right back up here. And so I, I didn't believe this price action. I didn't believe that... Um, if you look at this, you got a high first entry short pullback, or excuse me, first entry long, second entry long, and it fails right there. Um, so that is a you know failed second entry long. That's a chance to get short, but I don't want to get short there. So what did I do? I faded it um, instead of getting short down here uh, when this price action came down here and then started coming back up. I just bought and uh, it went a few ticks against me here uh, and then popped up real quick and gave me a, a four tick scalp. So I had a five tick loss followed by a four tick win, um, still a, obviously a net negative there. Uh, and then one more arrow here just noting the price action uh, and look at, the, look at the reaction to the EMA. We had all these doji closes right at the EMA. Then we had a close below the EMA and a few more closes below the EMA. And then we had a high below the EMA and another close. And then look at this close right at the EMA. There's another doji right at the EMA. So this, all of this is prices trying to reverse. And so I kind of gave up on the idea that we were going to have a, a retest of, of this high. Um, I just understood then at that point that we were we were looking at a reversal. Um, <clears throat> right in here, it tries to push higher once, comes back down, tries to push higher again, and, and then right below the low of this bar, it fails. So this is a kind of a failed second entry long. Um, so I think, you know, you could have gone short there. Uh, if you would used a stop to get short one tick below the low, you're getting short at 2010, and it only goes down to 2009. So chances are that would have been a four tick failure. Uh, and I think this ends up being one of those places where uh, Mac will mark both of these trades and and it'll be like, okay, you know, if you didn't get out of your scalp on this trade, then you can add on on this. <clears throat> because uh, this, it, it's another, notice that double top right there. Um, and there's a couple reasons to go. Look at the, the new low here. First entry long, pullback, second entry long, and it fails. Uh, very bearishly. Uh, also, there's a new low here. Pullback first entry short. It, it makes an equal low. So this pullback here gives you a, a chance for a second entry short. So it is both types of uh, entries there. It's it's a failed second entry long. It's also a failed or it's it's a failed second entry long and a valid second entry short. That's a nice bearish bar, very bearish close on that. It's below the EMA. It confirms this trend line coming down here with the touch there, and it holds prices once again. Uh, so I got short. Um, I did my kind of standard thing here, although I, I, I probably shouldn't have because I might have missed out on this trade. Um, but what happened is it ticked one lower, and I put a limit order, and I got short. Uh, and it actually went against me um, three ticks and it hovered in here for a while and then suddenly it just went boom and crashed crash down here and closed real bearishly there. Um, I ended up taking a six tick scalp on this one. Um, I thought 
I was convinced by the price action here that we were in the midst of a reversal um, and you know turns out to be absolutely spot on um, so yeah I just took a little bit extra large of a scalp there um, and at that point I was actually positive on the day. Uh, I mean, not much. I was up about sixteen dollars, um, and uh, and so yeah, that was that. Now I got a little bit confused as to where the trend line was. Um, I like this channel because it matches up with these with the high here, that touch, and that touch, and it's and it's you know bearish in here um, but I wasn't crazy about the way it fit the lows it didn't really fit the lows well down here um, so I think this is not actually correct I think the real trend line is is this one that I drew a little bit later <clears throat> but I, I took a while to, to draw that in and it was after all of this price action so I just had this channel working down um, and so we make a new low, I get my scalp, and, and it starts coming back here. Um, this, this price action in here was really slow. It was just moving really slowly here. Each of these bars was taking uh, three or four or five minutes to form. Uh, it's just, it just really wasn't doing much of anything. And I was tempted to go short right in here. Uh, it, eventually it would have worked out, of course, but I didn't like it because counting from this low, it's just a first entry. And I thought maybe I shouldn't go short there because it's a first entry and, and maybe I'll just wait for prices to work higher here and I'll get short uh, off of some nice bearish bar up in this area. Um, and so I didn't take this short here, but if you if you're counting these from this double top here, you have a new high pullback first entry long. Now let me back up a second. This high is higher than this high, so you can count this as a new swing high, and then you have first entry long pullback second entry long, and it fails. That's why I was tempted to go short in that spot. But I changed my mind because, like I said, it was a first entry, counting from this low. Um, but what ends up happening here is you get this really slow price action, and it's kind of like a little miniature trading range. And I had these lines in here, um, and I was looking for a nice entry, a nice setup to go short. Um, and I didn't like this bar. I mean, that didn't look, it didn't, you know, it was equal highs right here, uh, and it did not have a bearish close. Um, and so when this price action ticked one lower, I, I didn't take that short. Uh, obviously, I wish I had, um, but technically, you know, this was a second entry short. Here's a new low. First entry short, pullback, second entry short. It makes a, a, a lower low in here than these, a lower high, I should say, than these highs. Um, but it's not a good signal bar, and it's it's too congestive in this area. There's too much overlap. Um, so, yeah, so I missed that trade. Um, and, you know, come to think of it, there's another reason to enter that trade, and that is look at the low, first entry long, pullback second entry long and it only goes one two three ticks from this high so that's definitely a failed second entry long it can't really do much about this EMA that EMA is still holding as resistance and so I think the trade was to get short right underneath that bar and man this happened this was so slow and this was super fast uh, it just just dropped down there really quickly um, and I saw no way I was hoping maybe it'll pull back and give me a breakout pullback at this level N no such luck <clears throat> so and notice something interesting to here too is I drew these little micro trend lines 
So you get a little micro trend working down. Uh, you get a break and it makes a new low. And then you get a little micro trend working back up and you get a break. And so I was at least wanting an equal high here, if not one tick higher, and then reverse. Uh, and if it had done that, man, I would have been all over that. Um, but as it printed to the chart, I just... I just missed it. I didn't. I didn't get long. So I circled this area in in the magenta because it's just it's just a congestive area, and I didn't really see any good trades in in this whole area. <clears throat> so now, guess what? Um, I mean, I start having that counter trend trade impulse again. Um, and I was really close to getting long in here. I thought this this move was overdone. I thought we'd have a little pullback to the EMA. We did, um, but you know I was about to go long here at three and a quarter, I believe. And where's my eight tick stop? One and a quarter. So it would have survived. But again, you know I'm I'm, I'm trying to break that habit. Um, <laughs> so I made a note that I was tempted to counter. I mean, it doesn't even tick higher. It doesn't even tick higher. This bar looked bullish for a second because it, it had dropped down the low side and then it looked like it was maybe going to pop out the top side. And I thought that would have been bullish. And so that's why I was, I was almost going to try to sneak in there and just get long right in here. Might have been 350 that I was looking at. Um, Anyway, I, I, I was tempted to do some more counter trend trading, uh, but I avoided that temptation. Uh, and then this is where I got jacked. So remember, I was up about 16 bucks at this point. Um, and you get this, this, you have this channel working down, you get a break in here, uh, and it pushes down to a new low. Uh, so I was looking for this was really bearish and I, I didn't I, I didn't think this was the end of it I thought we'd see lower lows than these uh, so I was looking for a chance to get short um, and so what I ended up doing here is there's a high here first entry long pull back second entry long right here um, and so when prices went below this low I treated that as a failed second entry long. I went short right there at the low. Uh, and it closed right up here and stopped me out for an eight tick loss. Um, and so then I said, well, that's really bearish. I mean, that's really bullish. So what did I do? I went long right in here. And um, it went three ticks my way and came back here. And then it went three ticks my way again. And I said, damn it, what am I doing? I'm counter trend trading again. This is all bearish in here. Uh, it's, it's, it's the opposite of what we had over here. Every time it gets to the EMA, it's going down now. And sometimes it can't even make it back to the EMA. So you do not, I do not want to be getting long in this area. I was just frustrated that I had been stopped out of this short. Um, which this was a bad trade because this is a first entry and it's not even a bearish signal bar at that. Um, it's a it's a neutral if not even a little bit bullish of a signal bar there. So don't go short there. Uh, that's a first entry counting from this low. So yeah, frustration there. Um, and I went long out of frustration. Never went more than three ticks my way. And I said, the hell with this. I got out. Um, with a one tick loss from there to there uh, and that was you know thank goodness I at least did that uh, so I just took my one tick loss and then boom this came down here <clears throat> uh, so at least I didn't get an eight tick loss but I because I was long in here um, unfortunately I completely missed this short uh, and I haven't even talked about this. So look at the new low, first entry long, pull back, second entry long. Look how look how bullish that is, uh, and it can't even tick one higher. It just immediately reverses. So that's a failed second entry long, um, and it would have been good for a scalp, nothing more. 
if you use a stop to get short there, uh, you're getting short at 2,001.75, and it comes all the way down to 2,050. So definitely a four tick scalp there. Uh, and then it corrects again. <clears throat> Gives you this little two-legged correction. Look at the low here. First entry short, pull back. Second entry short, nice bearish bar. The EMA is still clearly acting as resistance. So just get short right underneath that bar. Uh, or exit your long trade um, and then it just gives you a nice little scalp again comes back and gets any runners um, and then I I noticed of course that we had had a break and a, uh, a new low and so I thought hey this is probably time for a reversal so I drew this little channel working up and this was the first break um, so I tried to fade it instead of waiting for a proper setup I just went long right here um, and I thought well you know it would it would tick back up here because after the break you usually get a retest um, but that was a horrible idea obviously um, I had bought uh, two contracts there um, and then when prices backed up down to here I actually bought a third contract um, and and then I got stopped out on, <clears throat> excuse me stopped out on the whole thing right there so that was a huge loss um, I think my equity was down to like 48,000 and 48 bucks or something like that and so my maximum drawdown is I can get down to uh, 50,000 this is again this is for the stop top step trader um, combine that I'm doing and uh, so it's all on a simulator this is not not real trading um, thank goodness uh, so this is all simulated trading but they do want you to follow their rules um, so you're not allowed to have anything more than a two thousand dollar max drawdown, you know, with your with your little demo account that starts at 50k. Uh, so right in here after that three contract loss, uh, it was pretty much game over. Uh, I mean, I had a few dollars left above the 48,000 mark. I was frustrated and dejected and thought for sure that we were going to have a reversal uh, so I just bought <clears throat> it went like five ticks against me and came back up here and gave me a scalp um, then then it pulled back here and made this kind of trappy little bar here so I went long again and got a three tick scalp I was just trading one contract at this point just trying to make a little bit of money back um, not really thinking anything will come of all this because I'm already pretty much at the end of the uh, the combine here um, but I think really what 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 happens here is you've get a you've got a new low here first entry short pull back second entry short this is a nice bearish bar it closed almost on its low um, and uh, honestly I I snuck in on this one I thought uh, that this line was acting as resistance. Uh, I thought that we weren't done going to, uh, we weren't done going down. Um, so I thought that this would eventually tick down and, and make us a, uh, a second entry short. So I snuck in, uh, and that's against the rules. Um, but yeah, I, I, I went ahead and snuck in anyway. Went short right there. Uh, it did actually form that second entry short <clears throat> and gave me my four tick scalp right here but this is the last trade that I marked this is right around noon um, and I do think that's a nice little uh, second entry short all the price action rules are, are being followed here you have uh, you have this channel working up you get a break it pushes to a new high it's a second entry nice bearish bar so boom that works out real well um, and that was all that I marked 
for the day. I, I did some more just goofing off down in here. Uh, I think I ended up losing a little bit more after these three um, wins in here. But let's see here. What is my... So I lost about almost $500 in the demo account here. And I'm down to 48000 126 bucks so <laughs> I have a, a little bit more than I need for one single contract trade uh, if I get one more loser I I'll be toast officially toast so um, yeah not looking great for the combine um, well, I'm not, I'm not, not much more I can say um, I, uh, I have quite a road ahead of me. Um, that's what this is all about. So hopefully you can uh, learn some things from my mistakes and from my uh, explanations of, of this price action and here especially. And um, Matt, just don't counter trend trade. And, and when you get a nice trend working up like that, Take advantage of those long opportunities. Um, and looks like a pretty bearish close in here. Um, so it ends up breaking out to the downside here pretty strongly. A couple of range days. All right, so that's about it. Um, hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you can learn something from my mistakes and we'll see you next time thanks for watching